The world of tomorrow. The words conjure images of chrome-colored robots, hovering cars, supercomputers, where convenience is the norm and boundaries nowhere to be seen. Our imaginations generated visions of the future where technology would allow us to live and learn in comfort. Many of those dreams have come to pass to become a reality. Generations of students applied traditional learning with pioneer spirit. In the classroom of old, textbook was king. The globe, microscope, map, and film strips were ways to break up the flow of lectures. But like the knowledge in many a textbook, the classroom, and more importantly, the learning process, has evolved. The world is changing, perhaps faster than it ever has before. Humanity's compendium of knowledge is a single click away. And in the Freehold Regional High School District, students and educators are proving that it isn't the gadget that's important. It's how they can support all students in their pursuit of their passions through rigorous programs preparing them for colleges and careers. Sometimes it takes a new tactic for traditional skills to connect with modern students. The Computer Sciences Academy focused on mathematics and problem-solving skills by combining them with the ever-expanding field of computer programming. This led to their involvement with the international cyber event, the Hour of Code. Nowadays, everything is technology, and knowing how to create technology and to make it do what you want it to do is something that everybody should have and has a right to have. I feel like I can use this in the future to get myself a career. It's problem solving. It's problem solving and critical thinking and logic. And that you use every day of your life. And we tell our students in the Computer Science Academy, even if you don't pursue computer science, what you are learning here, you will own for the rest of your life and you will be able to use it. Students in the Animal and Botanical Sciences Academy learn from bell to bell in a more modern way incorporating digital technology that allows for clearer visual learning, while using free programs like Socrative to give their instructors instantaneous feedback on their levels of comprehension. With um, a collaborative creative thinking exercise where multiple students have to participate into one document or artifact of work, the tools that I've sometimes used are, are sites like Today's Meet, Socrative and Edmodo, Google Docs. And what a teacher is able to do is look through revision history and identify and hold students accountable for their participation rates. A group of four students can work on one genuine document with lots of interaction and lots of back and forth despite geographic barriers where they might live in a, in a large district like ours here at uh, Freehold Regional. At Howell High School, several technology programs are looking to blend the unique requirements of the tech world with practical applications for the real world. Since we've gotten 3D printers, uh, we've had some students build their own 3D printers to play around. Right now, my students are working on a project where they're designing their own computer mouse. Uh, we're actually taking the guts out of working computer mice and we're making a custom fit mouse for that student. Uh, they're designing their own and they get to take that home with them uh, and use it for the next five, ten years until they break it again and print another one, uh, which is really great because they can actually have a hands-on, tactile item to go home with versus you write a paper, you print it out, but you don't get to see that process of printing or you don't get to see what really happens on the, the back end of that. In the entertainment technology program, you learn more than just the actual field we're studying. You learn life skills, you learn how to talk to people, cooperate. You learn how to be way more professional than a normal classroom because you're held on a higher level. Uh, you turn into an adult a lot faster in a professional sense. We try as hard as possible to have there be no difference between the real world and the classroom. We try to put our students into situations where they've got to solve problems, meet deadlines, stay on schedule, and deliver a polished show in a stress-free production environment. This program has definitely helped me with college and the professional field I want to go into because it's already like a college class. I've heard from so many people that your first couple years of college are just like this class. And hey, maybe those dreams of the future from the classic sci-fi films aren't so far off. Students in the Science and Engineering Center have already begun making some of the devices of tomorrow on class time. This is a computer interfacing project that combines the input from this balance board that we built to track tilt forward and backward, and also from this Kinect camera, which can track the joint positions. And it'll track posture of a person, and it'll display the results of their posture on the screen. This project uses three programming languages, Java, Python, and C. It uses Java to uh, process the captured images from the webcam and to stitch them together into a panorama. And it uses C to control the Arduino to make it take pictures. And then Python to help the Arduino communicate with the computer. 
and to tell the computer when to begin processing the captured images. I wanted to create an AI which could actually play Pokemon in a competitive sort of context. Solving these problems is more than just figuring out strategies. It's a big problem in mathematics. You can't just throw it at a computer and brute force it. You have to be very intelligent about how you go about finding the best strategy. President Obama has put out the call for teachers to rise to the challenge of bringing learning to a new age, to be future ready. We've got to bring the world to every child's fingertips because they're already more technologically savvy than we are, but if they think that the school is 20, 30 years behind, then they're going to lose interest in school. Mr. Charles Sampson, superintendent of schools in the Freehold Regional High School District, is on the same page as the president. Albert Einstein said that if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, the fish will spend its entire life believing it is stupid. Our goal here, above all, is to provide a consistent experience that recognizes the differences inherent in every student that swims in the streams of our hallways, and that each student is a unique individual with unique aspirations, unique talents, who need the opportunities, accompanied with the support, to display those talents to the world. Well, we may not have the flying cars, rocket packs, and robot companions often seen in science fiction films and television shows, the technology field has given us some breathtaking, bold new frontiers to explore. That ingenuity is already influencing education. Who knows what breakthrough ideas are being dreamt up by students in classrooms right now? The world of tomorrow, where technology makes things easier, makes things better? It starts today. Cut. That's a wrap. Break it down. Excellent. All right. Like we saw? Yeah. Good. All right. That's break down. We're taking this to post. The world of tomorrow, it's here. And the Freehold Regional High School District is future ready. All right, guys, we've got some new footage. We'll get this in the timeline so we can get this out.